In this video, we will make a custom component in Eagle. Specifically, we will make the dual voltage regulator used in my camera breakout videos. The specific component that I used is shown right here. This is his data sheet. It is the TPS718 and there are some other numbers over here to indicate what the actual voltage values are going to be. And here's its symbol and if we scroll down, here's what its package outline is going to look like. There are various packages for it and this is the one that we're going to actually make. Now the first thing that you really want to do before making your own custom package in Eagle is to check if the package already exists in a, another library. So what we will do is we will look in the library that was preloaded with Eagle and we'll scroll down to the Texas Instruments library right here and you can open it up by clicking on this arrow and take a look inside and we're looking for the TPS 718 and we see there are a bunch of components that they have but it does not look like they have the TPS 718. You can look through these and they're all going to be slightly different. The package that we are trying to make looks like this so it actually has all the leads underneath the chip itself as opposed to being out on the sides and you can see that in the Eagle library that we had none of these really look that way and so we are going to have to make our own. Of course the company like Texas Instruments can't have the library component for every possible chip that they have so we have to make some of our own. So let's get into that. A library overall is just a collection of various devices and components so if we take a look at a library for example here's one of my libraries we can just look at it like that but we can actually open it up and modify it and we can do that with all of the libraries in Eagle as well and what we can do is double click on this and it opens up a screen like this we can maximize that and you can see that I have a lot of different devices packages and symbols that I have already created so this is what a library may look like and you can double click on any of these and open it up to take a look at what it looks like so I don't know let's open up this one right here and you can see that this is for a crystal oscillator this is the package that I made for it and so we can explore libraries that way but we're going to make our own so if I go here to file new library it'll open up this blank library and so now what we want to do is make our own device so I always like to start with the package, although it's really up to you. You can start with either the package or the symbol. I'm going to start with the package, that is the actual outline that we're going to place on our printed circuit board. So if you go up here, there's an interface with the various things you can create. And so right here you have device, package, or symbol. And so I'm going to click on package, and we have to give it a name. So actually, let's take a look at our data sheet once more and the package has a name here they call it SPWSON well the dash N6 but I'll just call it PWSON plastic small outline no lead PWSON and since it has six leads here technically seven with the pad underneath we'll just call it PWSON-6 just to make it kind of unique for later if we have more packages in here and it says create new package yes we want to create the package and it'll take us to a screen that looks like this so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to lay down our actual surface mount pads and the way that that goes is you click over here on the SMD symbol and it gives you this pad that you can lay down and so I just click it once and I lay it down and now I'm just going to modify this one pad and replicate it in order to make the rest since it's going to be very symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I will click on the info button up here and click on the pad and it tells me its size. Well this size is actually in inches and I believe the data sheet is in millimeters and it depends on the data sheet that you're actually following when you're making this but since mine is in millimeters I'm first going to change my grid to reflect that from inches up here to millimeters and the spacing that I'm going to choose the size of the grid is actually going to reflect the spacing in between the pads and my actual components so for that let's take a look back at the data sheet and we can see that the spacing in between the pads is 
0.65 millimeters. And since that's the case, I'm going to change it to 0.65. And that'll just make things easier for us later on. Now, we also need to know the size of this pad. And so once more, we look at the data sheet. And you can actually see they're nice about this. They tell us very directly that the pads are 0.7 by 0.3 millimeters. Now, in some data sheets, it's not going to be that nice for you. And in fact, it's not always going to provide you with an example board layout. Oftentimes, in other data sheets, you'll have to sort of calculate what the board should look like based on what the package itself looks like. So this is what the package itself looks like, and you can make up a board around that based on where these actual pads lie. But this is nice enough, and many data sheets are nice enough to tell you what it should look like. But oftentimes they won't tell you explicitly that the pad should be 0.7 by 0.3. Instead, it'll give you dimensions like this, and you'll have to calculate it, calculate it yourself by taking 2.8 minus 1.4 and dividing by 2 to get 0.7 for the length of a pad, and they'll probably do a similar thing for the width of it as well. But for this, 0.7 by 0.3. So we go back here, we click Info on the pad, and we make it 0.7 by 0.3. And so now it looks like this, and you see things are pretty small. All right, so let's look back at the data sheet. And now we have to calculate where the actual pad is centered. So the first one, arbitrarily, we'll call this at an X position of zero, but what about its Y position? Well, the Y position begins at 1.4 over 2, so at 0.7, and up through half of 2.8, so 1.4, but then we have to take the point in between that. And for this, it's oftentimes useful to have a calculator handy. So we can look at this, and we'll know that it's going to be 1.4 minus 0.35. We know this because we know that this is all the way up to 1.4. We know that half of the pin length is 0.35, since the whole pin is 0.7, and so we know that the center here is a 1.05, and so that's where we're going to place our first pin. And so once more, I'll click on the info, and here I can make its x position be equal to 0, and its y position equal to 1.05. And here we go, but now, of course, it's not rotated the correct way, so I can grab it with a move tool and just rotate it, oh, but that changes our placement, so again, just to fix this up, 0 and 1.05. And here we go. So now it's at the correct position. Now the spacing side to side, I made 0.65 to make things easier for us. So what I can do now is just replicate it using the copy tool. And then I'll just grab it and move it over by one this way, move it over by one that way. And then actually to get it down here to be properly symmetrical, I'll flip it twice. And now it'll be exactly where I want it to be on the other side. And we can verify this by checking its Y position, which should be negative 1.05, and all of these positions, negative 0.65, negative 1.05, and so on. So now we have these six pads that we needed for our design right here. We're still missing this center pad. And so if we look at what is a center pad, well, if we look at the chip right here, we have these six pins out here, but we also have a big ground pad underneath that we're going to solder to. So that's what this pad is going to be for. And so again, we're given its dimensions nicely over here. It's 1.6 by 1. So let's grab another SMD pad, place it right in the middle here, and once more go to its properties and let's make it 1.6 by 1. So it'll look something like this. And you can see that there's also a specification for these vias over here. They're thermal vias, so they're for better heat dissipation. And it tells you where to place them. But for my purpose, since I know that this application is not going to generate much power and therefore is not going to need to dissipate much heat, I'm not going to include them just to make our board a little bit simpler. So let's go back to what we have right here. Let's save this, actually. So we're going to save our library. We need to save it as something. So let's just call this tutorial.lbr. OK, so now we have this library, tutorial.lbr, and we have made this package. But we're not quite done yet. 
The next thing that I want to do is I want to name these pins just to make things easier for me later on when I make the device and connect the pins. And so I'll just go around. Again, I can refer back to my data sheet here. And in this case, what I'll look back at is actually going to be this right here. And I know the pins go one, two, three, four, five, six around the perimeter. And then there is this ground pin here. So I'll just name them since it's lying sideways. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and this one I'll just call seven for now. Okay, so now we have technically all we really need in order to use this package. However, we want to make this a little bit nicer and more user friendly. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a little bit of a silk screen by using this wire tool right here. The wire tool is just going to basically draw lines and I'll make my grid a little bit finer. So here I'll go from 0.65 to 0.1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just about trace where this package is going to lie. And so if I start tracing, I know that it goes all the way around this. Right now I'm drawing on the, on the copper layer and the top layer, and I don't want to do that. So again, I center click just like before to change the layers, and I place this on the T-place layer, so on the silk screen. And I'm just going to roughly go around this and mark where this is going to be. And so click on that and this is what our package may look like. I can get more precise by looking at the data sheet and once more looking at the dimensions of what things are actually supposed to look like. And so th this was our board outline, but this is what the package is actually going to look like. And you can see they actually give some tolerance. As they say, this will be somewhere between 1.9 and 2.1 millimeters, so just about 2 by 2 millimeters. And so, going back to this, I can actually modify this a little bit to better reflect that since I know exactly where it goes. Again, using the info, I'll click on this, and right now it goes up to 1.4 in height. I know it should go from 1 to 1 because it's 2 by 2 altogether, from negative 1 to 1. So it'll shift a little bit, do the same thing here, one, negative one, negative one, negative one. Okay, so this is what the package will actually look like. And so you can see that the way the pads were recommended to be drawn, they don't just go directly underneath the package as we may have presumed, as I did when I drew the initial outline. It actually goes something like this. And this is to make soldering a lot easier because then I don't have to place solder directly underneath the package like with solder paste but I can use regular solder potentially this center pad will still be difficult with that method but I can solder things from the outside because these pads are longer than they need to be so this makes for a nice package design okay so this is what the package will actually look like and I want this on the silk screen in order to make the placement of it a little bit easier and one more thing just to make things much easier for us in the future is to place a little circle by the first pin. And so I select this circle tool over here and right here I'll just draw a little circle that's going to go right here. And that indicates to me that this is the first pin because this looks exactly symmetrical. There's no way to tell if this is the first pin or this is the first pin. And so to make things much easier when we're actually soldering we want to mark where the first pin will be. So this will show up on the silk screen layer. One more thing that I want to include here is going to be a documentation layer where I'm going to show what the actual package looks like. And so for that, I'm again going to go to the wire tool and I'm going to trace things once more as I did before here. But now I don't want to be in a T place layer. I want to be actually on layer 51, T docu, so the top documentation layer. And again, I'm actually going to trace the exact same thing, perhaps actually in a thinner width. So let's say 0.5. This 0.05. This documentation layer is only visible to us when we're drawing things, when we're, when we're putting things down on the board in our layout, and it's not going to be visible on the silk screen. So it's just for our personal documentation. And so I'm on the documentation layer and I draw this once more, but it looks identical to the silk screen and so what I'll do is I'll go to these layers, go to layer 51, and I like to actually change this to be a different color. I'm going to make this this color right here. Okay, so now it stands out a bit. And the thing that I want to do with the documentation layer as well is 
I want to actually put down the entire package on here just to see how it fits on top of this footprint that I've drawn. So I'll go back to my data sheet and I'll look at these actual pads. So this is a drawing of the actual package and I'll look at these pads and I see that they're supposed to be just about 0.25 in height and about 0.3 in width stemming from my actual outline. So I'll go back here and I'll select the rectangle tool over here and I will draw a rectangle and I know how big it's supposed to be so I just draw a sort of approximating here but then I'll go to the info of this rectangle, I'll, I'll click on it and again I know that it's supposed to be about 0.25 in height so right now it's actually a little bit smaller let's make it 0.25 so this is from 1 to 0.75 and I know that it's supposed to be 0.3 or just about 0.3 in width and that's already the case it goes from negative 0.5 to point to negative 0.8 so I'll click OK and that's what it should look like and now once again I can copy it and lay it down after changing the grid to the appropriate spacing so 0 0.65 I'll copy this to the next one to the next one and then once more to the bottom by taking it and flipping it twice over here over here and over here so this is what the actual package here in yellow is going to look like and this is nice for various packages it just makes things a bit nicer for me because I know exactly what my actual package is going to look like it's kind of a sanity check on whether or not you made your layout correctly this is especially good when there isn't a recommended layout like there was on this data sheet but when you're making it yourself the last thing that we want to put in here is actually going to be again kind of for documentation I'm going to change my grid to a little finer spacing once more for this and that is to give this a name and a value. So recall that when we're actually making our schematic and our layout, things have a name and a value associated with them which you can change. And to make them be coordinated amongst each other between the schematic and the layout, they have to be somehow linked. And to link them, we're going to use the text tool here. And we're going to give this a special notation with this greater than sign and then capital name and if we do that, so right now it's still on the T docu layer, we're going to change that actually to the T names layer. And so we're going to place the name of this chip, let's say right here, and by the way the size and location doesn't really matter. And now I'm also going to do the same thing with the word value. And then I'm going to place that on the T values layer, and let's say somewhere right here around this chip. And that's it. That completes our package. So now we want to save this and let's move on to making a symbol. So to make a symbol we'll click on this right here which is a new symbol and let's call this, so this chip was called if we look back at our data sheet this chip is TPS 718 and there's again more numbers here so let's just call it TPS 718 for the symbol. TPS 718. Again create new symbol, yes and here we go. So the first thing that we want to do is make some kind of an outline. You can get fancy by drawing things that kind of represent what you're actually making. In this case, since it's a rectangular chip, there's nothing to get too fancy about. And it's just going to be some kind of a rectangle. So I'll start it off by just drawing this rectangle right here. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered or anything, but yeah, just a rectangle. Now, if we look at the data sheet, the way that it looks is it's vertical in the sense that we have these pins that are coming out of here like this one two three four five six but remember the package that we drew was actually on its side right so it was something like this so just to make a kind of align more to the package that we drew again this is kind of my preference not really necessary I'm going to also place this on its side even though that's not how it directly is in the data sheet. So it'll be on its side like this and the next thing we want to do is add some pins. So I'll go over here to this pin icon and I'll select a pin and I'm just going to place these around the package in the corresponding locations. Now I don't like these really long ones. Instead up here you can change the, the length of the pin and so I'll make it shorter. Rotate it and all I have to do is place three pins on one side, three pins on the other, and there's also that ground pin, so maybe I'll place that over here just to keep track of it. 
Okay, so you can see uh, these pins have um, these names, which are kind of overlapping in the at the moment. And what we want to do is name them appropriately in order to reflect what we actually have in the data sheet. So if we look in the data sheet, we have out1, in, out2, en2, gnd, and en1. And also, of course, our ground pad right here. So we're going to label it the same way on our schematic, on our symbol. To do that, we click on this name tool and click on the first pin and let's call it out1 in out2 enable2 two, gnd and en1 Okay, so you can see that things aren't looking great right here. Things are kind of squished together. So one thing we can do is move it apart, and I'm going to use the grouping property to do that. Move this whole group, and maybe make it something like this. That looks a little bit better. Maybe it's still a little bit compressed. Let me move this right here, and perhaps I'll actually space this out just a little bit more. There's no reason to really compress things. Here we go, that looks better. Now, I want to name my last pin and I want to call it GND as well. And so I tried to do that, but it's going to tell me there's a problem. GND already exists, right? I already have something called GND and these pins have to have unique names. So this seems like a bit of a problem. What if we have more than one pin with the same role? So what we do is actually we name our pins GND and then we say add five for example it, th this doesn't have to be exactly the pin number but it, it just makes sense we use the at five to make it distinct and eagle will interpret this appropriately when we actually use this to exclude the at five and just make it gnd but for naming purposes we do have to include that and so for this one we will call it gnd at seven is the seventh pin and it'll look something like this and this is then going to display appropriately once we're done and now each pin also has a unique name. Now the next thing we want to add here is again going to be a name and value property so we'll go back to text and the same way we did on the package we'll say name with the greater than sign and be careful you have to place this not on the symbols layer but rather on the names layer so maybe somewhere up here and value again on the values layer down here for example now there are more things you can change, like for example the directions of these pins. All of these are labeled as I.O. That is, they're either inputs or outputs. You can change it to inputs, outputs, power pins, and other things like that. And that is sometimes useful, especially if you're doing an electric error check, where you check whether things make sense electrically. But I usually don't do this just because I check things myself anyway. So I'll leave it off just to keep it a little bit simpler. So we're done with this symbol. We're going to save it. And now we're going to make a device out of our symbol and package. And so we'll click over here on device and make a new device. Well, I'll just call it the same thing as the package. I'll call it TPS 718. And that's what it will appear as in the library when we use it. And so then I have to pick a symbol. So to do that, I clicked right here to add. And I pick our, well, right now we only have one symbol. So I'll pick TPS 718, place it right here. And then I'll go to new down here for the package and I'll select a package which we can use. In this case, again, we only have one package in our new library, so it'll have to be that one. And now we have this symbol and a package and we have to match the pins from one to the other. So we'll double click on this package and you see a list of pins and a list of pads. And so you should carefully go through this and make sure to match the right one to the right pin. And since we labeled our pads on the package nicely, just in order, it should be pretty easy. So we can look over here, for example, or at the data sheet and pick out the right one. So here we see that out one is pin one. So we can go through that like that, or we can just go through this list right here. And we see that EN1 is actually pin six, so I'll double click on six. EN2 is pin four. Then GND at five, well, that gives it away. It's 5, GND at 7 is at 7, in is 2, out 1 is 1, and out 2 is pin 3. And now what I like to do, after you've matched them right here, just to again 
uh, go through a little bit of a sanity check is to order these by pad number and go through them once more and you see that it should go around the perimeter out one in out two en2 gnd en1 and then gnd for the last pad and that looks correct double check this triple check this you do not want to make a mistake right here and so we'll say okay and now it's done if you had more than one package that you would use for the same symbol which can happen many times you would have to give this a variant name and so for that you would right click this and say rename and maybe call it I don't know variant A and then you can have a variant B and so on or any other variants but if you don't have more than one package you can skip this step and I should also mention that you can add a custom prefix to this so instead of being like U dollar sign that would naturally show up on your schematic you can give it another prefix like JP or something for jumpers or headers or things like that but again it's not strictly necessary so I'm not going to include it to keep this a bit more simple so that's it for creating a device so now we save this and our library is already saved and so now we can exit this and now supposedly we can use our library however let's go back to the schematic that we had made previously for the breakout board in my other videos and let's say I want to use this library that I just made I'm gonna go to add a component I know that my library should be called tutorial so let's scroll down here to where tutorial should be and it doesn't look like it's here right and that's because we did not yet enable this library to be used in order to do that we have to actually enable the library so let me first move our new library into the folder that we are already viewing right here. So right now I have it in this folder, but I want it to be in this folder. So I'm going to take my tutorial.lbr and I'm just going to copy it over to over here. And so now it should appear in this library after a refresh and here it is so we can see that we have this tutorial.lbr but notice this circle next to it is gray instead of being a larger green in order to use this library we just have to click this and now it's enabled and so then if I do the same thing as before and I go into my schematic over here and I say add let's search for tutorial here it is so we have our tutorial library here is our component and we can insert it over here and then if I look at the corresponding board that we have we can see that there is this component that we just created that got placed right here and this is the component that we just made so overall we have seen how to make a custom component in Eagle there are more topics that I did not cover such as writing a description for your part as well as other customizations we have seen all of the essentials